Welcome to my Jimbo Youthful Academy. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So we are in a civic education grade 9 class. We are continuing on Monday. The last time uh, we learned, we talked about uh, the characteristics of good money. But first we defined money. We said that money is anything of value that can be used in the exchange of goods and services. Then we talked about the characteristics of money. We say that one of the characteristics of uh, something that you use in the exchange of goods and services, it should be portable, it should be easy to carry around. Not, for example, like stones, it will be heavy for people to carry around stones. Maybe you are moving from Kitwe uh, to Lusaka to buy something and you have the stones to carry around. So we say that uh, something that is used as money should be portable, that is easy to carry. And should also look uniform, not the notes that you are using maybe in Lusaka are different in those ones that they are using in Chipata. This can bring confusion in the country. Very good. So let us proceed. Today we are looking at functions of money. What is the function of money? So, money is used as a measure of value. So, the value of a good or a service or the worthness of something or an item can be measured with money. For example, if an item costs 300 kwasha, it is twice as much as an item that costs 150 kwasha. So, for example, if you have a razor blade, and another one is a pencil case. You cannot compare the weight of a laser blade to that of a pencil case. So we are saying that money helps us to value the goods, to put a cost to a particular good. That's what we are saying. Very good. We move on. Money also can be used as a store of value. Store means to keep for the future. Very good. So people sell items such as a car, a cow, a house, and you deposit the money in the bank, which can be used in the future. So when you sell those items and you keep the money in the bank, then you are using money as a store of value. So you can have maybe 100 goats, and you want to use this money to pay school fees for next term, since we are in the first term. So you can sell those goods and keep the money in the bank. So that's why we are saying that money is used as a store of value. Very good, we proceed. Money can also be used as a medium of exchange. What do we mean? So people accept money in exchange for goods and services. So when I give you a 20 quart, and then maybe you give me two big pens. So we have exchanged. I have given you money and you have given me a pen. So money is used as a medium of exchange. Another example I can give. When you, last year you were in grade 8 and this year you were in grade 9. Your parents had to go to your various schools to maybe um, pay for school fees. <laughs> There is no paying nowadays in Zambia. But for those who go to a boarding school, they pay a certain amount of money. Or those who go to private schools. So you pay, the, your parents pay money in exchange for the education that you people are receiving. Now, the, um, for this YouTube channel, I don't think you are paying anything to me. Okay, so you are having free education. Yeah, this is called free education. This one you are receiving from this YouTube channel. But anyways, when you go and buy books, you give them money and then they buy, they give you, sorry, books. So we are using money as a medium of exchange. Then also money can be used as a form of a gift. A gift, a gift. For example, when it's somebody's birthday, or it is your birthday, uh, somebody gives you a 50 kwacha to appreciate that you have added another year to your life, or maybe you can give 
uh, money as a gift. For example, last term you passed very well in term three, grade eight. So your parents can give you money as a gift. Very good. Or maybe it's somebody's wedding and you are invited to a wedding. They say, if you want to buy a gift, you bring in monetary form. So you take for them a 200 quarter, a 500 quarter. That is a gift. So money can also be used as a gift. Money can be used as an offering in churches. So usually people go to offer in churches. Actually, many churches. I'm not sure if maybe there is a church where people don't offer. I'm not aware. But what I know is that most the people offer in the church. And that money is used for various activities in the church. Okay, so we proceed with the law of supply and demand. Now, here, what is it that we are talking about? We are talking about uh, goods and services. Okay, maybe let's just define what a demand is. A demand is the ability or willingness to pay for a particular item or service. So this is where now people are willing to buy something. So that's a demand. So now, what is it that determines a demand? If the goods are in short supply or in high supply, who will cause that particular good to either be high or low. For example, like now is rainy season. Because it's rainy season and it is also cold. So the gels that maybe last year you were buying at 90 watch, maybe now because it is cold and it demands that you should buy a gels, it has gone to 100 watch. So that's what we are talking about. We will explain more on that one. Now, what is supply? Supply is the amount of goods or services that a seller offers for a particular price at a particular time. So the amount of goods, amount meaning number, how many that those things you are selling. For example, if I often sell 100 shirts and in your school you like those shirts, but the next time I come, I, I only have 50. So there will be a lot of people who would want those shirts, but the shirts will not be available. That's supply. So it means that those shirts are now in short supply. They are few. That's what it means. But if I bring a lot, people will say she always brings a lot. So why, why should I be in a hurry to go and buy? So it means that the supply is high. You are getting it. So, for example, if I'm selling shirts to you, and there is also another person who is selling shirts, if my my shirts are of high quality, and even that other person's shirts are also of high quality, but my prices are higher than the other person, many people will flock to that other person. So then the shirts will be in high supply because there are two people who are supplying those shirts or who are selling those shirts. But if mine are, uh, the price is high, people go to their other person. Very good. So, okay, let us proceed. So the price of a good or a service is determined by the law of supply and demand. What is it that we are talking about? So, if the supply of goods is high, when you have a lot of goods on the market, Everyone may be selling the same type of goods, they say tomatoes, so they are a lot. Then the demand is low and the price will be low. If there are many people selling tomatoes, everyone wants their tomatoes to be bought, so the prices will go down. So if we were to write an equation, this is how it will be. High supply of the goods, we have given an example of tomatoes, then the demand will be low. Uh, people will not be rushing to go and buy those tomatoes because there are plenty on the market. So since there is a low demand, the price will be low. The prices of those goods will be low. Now let's look at the opposite. So if the supply is low, there are few goods that are being sold on the market. Maybe uh, uh, 
at the entire market only two people are selling tomatoes. What will happen to those two people? They will take an advantage, they are going to hike the prices. Why are they hiking the prices? Because the demand is high. So if we were to write the equation, it would be low supply, few goods on the market. So there is going to be a high demand. And if there is a high demand, the people who are selling, they are going to increase the prices. So there will be high prices. Very good. I hope you are following. Anyways, in case you have not understood, just rewind the video. And you will understand it. Okay, now let's look at what happens when the demand is low or when the demand is uh, high. It's almost the same thing, but this is a different explanation on the part of demand. But they, they are the same. So if the demand is low, people don't really want that item which you are selling on the market, then the supply will be high. There are few people who want to buy. So if there is high supply, then the prices will be low. So if we were to write an equation, then it would be low demand, two people want to buy that item, then high supply, there are so many things on the market, those goods are plenty on the market, but few people want to buy them, so the price will be low. That's the thing, people will reduce the price, very good. So let's look at the opposite now. If the demand is high, many people really want maybe records, now it is a rain season, and the supply is low. There are many people who want to buy raincoats, but few people are selling raincoats. What will happen to the prices? There will be an increase in the prices. So if we were to write an equation to be like this, high demand, many people want this particular item, then there's going to be low supply. If there's low supply of this item, which is very much needed at that particular time, there will be high prices. So, that's it for today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Angie Ngwenyufu YouTube channel.